Welcome everyone. Really excited to be here, and uh, you know, want to thank you all uh, for joining. And uh, you know, if you're a user of uh, you know Windows who's thinking about running containers, is already running containers, uh, there are so many benefits uh, as compared to Linux containers as well. And uh, you know, the workloads and then there's the security part and efficiency and all sorts of things. And um, if you if you're working with that, you might have come across the Mobi container system, right? And uh, what's, what's happening is that uh, the Mobi container system framework, it's getting its first major release in like almost two years. And uh, obviously there are gonna be some of the changes and experimental you know, like, uh, features that we'll talk about. On side note, Microsoft is moving away from Mobi and towards like bare bones container uh, the in like many of their Azure products and all these other things. So now the question arises, okay, now, uh, all the, you know, lots of Windows Server and the Azure, Azure users, they're left wondering like, uh, what is now the best way for us to run containers? So a lot to unpack and we are here to help me and Bon. Uh, so Jan, thanks a lot for uh, joining us today. And uh, a little bit about me, I'm Kunal. I, was a, I work as a DevRel manager at uh, Cibo. I'm a content creator and, uh, you know, involved in a lot of communities. So I love engaging in discussions and hopping on webinars such as this. Um, so I'm really excited. Um, off to you, Bjorn. Yeah, so I'm Bjorn. I'm a uh, software engineer on the Mirantis Container Runtime team, as well as a uh, maintainer of the Mobi project. Um, you know, my my day to day is by and large uh, contributing to open source and you know the the entire uh, Mobi project, which we'll get into. And uh, you know, my team is really responsible for uh, for two things. You know, both uh, contributing to the upstream open source community project, as well as uh, delivering that as a project to our end users. Right. So uh, before we get started with like, okay, what are the things that are changing? Some of the key things to keep in mind uh, for folks who may be new, let's say who want to start running containers on Windows or whatever, let's discuss a little bit about what is Mobi. And from what I understand, it's more like if someone asks me, hey, Kunal, you know, how, if you're talking about containers, like running containers, but the most popular thing that comes to mind is Docker. So is Mobi like Docker? Is an alternative Docker? What I, I think is like more of a set of, let's say, pieces they give, like for, let's say, a lot of standard components that, you know, uh, you can use to assemble into like your own uh, custom platforms. So let's say, for example, you're working with, uh, uh, if I talk about components, then orchestration, image management, sec secret management, configs, networking, provisioning, all sorts of things. So can you tell us a little bit more about it, right? Um, you know, for example, container enthusiasts who want to experiment with some of the, let's say, latest technology or even uh, you know, open source developers who are looking to, let's say, just test out their project. What is Mobi and how they can utilize it? And uh, since we're talking about containers, you can also compare it with Docker. And uh, we can also talk about MCR and how that differs from Mobi and uh, how Mirantis is basically involved with Mobi. Yeah. So, you know, for, for, for better and for worse, Docker has been synonymous with containerization, right? And that has been both a very... Um, a very powerful thing to communicate the concept, but also there's a lot of confusion, um, you know, through branding over the years, through you know, kind of the the relationship of all the different projects. So, you know, I'm I'm going to start with Moby and then kind of work back to uh, all the other brands. So, so Moby is what a lot of people knew as Docker. Moby is the engine; it's the core technology and code base that is actually responsible for running your containers, for pulling images, for doing all the things that you you know more or less think a useful uh, version of Docker would do. Um, Moby is, you know, kind of a rebranding to help it stand on its own out of the shadow of Docker Inc. And so there's, I think, you know, still it's it's been years since the rename. There's still a lot of confusion around it. So the analogy I like to use is essentially like one of Linux or Kubernetes, right? So Linux is a neutral upstream with lots of vendor participation, and you can build it by itself. You can do some useful things with just Linux, but in general, to do something really useful with it, you need other components. And typically, those components get assembled into a complete product that then is Ubuntu, is CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, et cetera. So, you know, Moby's in a similar role. You know, and another analogy would be Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a open source project that is the core of a container orchestrator. But to truly get the functionality that most people, you know, want out of a useful version of Kubernetes, you do need some additional pieces. And, uh, you know, so that, that kind of goes back to what is Docker? Um, Docker 
is you know both the company Docker Inc that is commercializing the uh, open source products that they first developed as well as I think the tools that you know more people associate with them is uh, Docker CE and Docker Desktop and you know we'll uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second um Mirantis Container Runtime 2 I think is a little confusing just because it's a newer name it's a, it's a new face on the block but Mirantis Container Runtime has in actuality been along a very uh, been around a very long time um, you know, Mirantis Container Runtime is the new name under Mirantis for Docker Engine Enterprise, which is the commercially supported version of the uh, the Docker Engine, or you know, it was the um, the enterprise counterpart to the free and self supported uh, Docker CE, Docker Community Edition. And you know, Mirantis has moved to this new branding to uh, try to again help reduce this confusion around the uh, the sometimes uh, overloaded Docker brand name. So, so then, like, if we if we move to talk about okay, Mirantis Container Runtime, Docker CE, you know, what what are those? And you know, or even Docker Desktop. Um, so, Docker CE is essentially Mobi, the Mobi project, the core technology, which includes some subcomponents that are baked in, as well as Docker Inc.'s own um, selected, uh, you know, what would I call it, like bundle um, of developer tools that they think are a useful part of the container building experience. So, Docker CE is free. It's based on upstream Mobi plus additional things like uh, tools that you're probably quite familiar with, uh, Docker Compose, um, Docker Build X, um, and, and so on to kind of create a more, uh, more cohesive and useful toolkit that comes with batteries included. Uh, Mirantis Container Runtime, you know, like I said, it's the successor to Docker Engine Enterprise. So it is similar to Docker CE, but it makes some different choices and it has some different features. Um, you know, so Mirantis Container Runtime, uh, for example, has a uh, FIPS 142. Uh, com compliance built in. It has a, uh, you know, it has an SLA. It has support that comes with the licensing, um, and it goes through our extensive uh, validation and regression testing process um, before a release is made. So it is, you know, if coming from the same code base, but again, kind of using that analogy of distributions, right? Kind of one is one is Ubuntu, uh, one is uh, one is Red Hat. And then, you know, going back to kind of what, what I mentioned, you know, when I was talking about my team, as well as this relationship with the Mobi project as a community project. So Mirantis Container Runtime is, you know, in, in essence, our commercialization of the work we do on Mobi. So I, you know, personally, as well as some others in my team, we are maintainers in the Mobi project. We work hand in hand with, you know, both contributors from Docker Inc., who still, of course, builds on Mobi, um, as well as contributors from the community to create a neutral uh, you know, container platform, container toolkit that is useful for everyone, and that then we can turn into our individual um, you know, products, projects, um, interpretations. Um, so all the work we do in Mirantis Container Runtime is upstream first. Really, we are delivering all of our work to the community in the open, and then for those who want it from, you know, with a secure supply chain from a trusted source with RQA and support, uh, we have a productized form of that. Um, kind of to help with that, help communicate that better, you know, notably with uh, version 23.0, we're also moving to align our version numbers with upstream. So when you go on GitHub and you see a Mobi tag, for instance, um, you know, you'll be able to easily see, ah, there's the corresponding Mirantis container runtime tag corresponding version. So this is the code that I am getting delivered by Mirantis. Um, you know, the code has always been uh, very close to upstream, but with uh, 23, we're just really trying to make that more obvious, make it easier to understand. Ah, when when did when did this uh, when did this fix that was delivered to Mobi Mobi make it to my production systems. Thanks for sharing, Bjorn. And from what you just told me, so I, I really I can say that Docker belongs to like the containers and the VM platform category of, let's say, the tech stack that folks work with. And Mobi is more like a, like a, like a container tool. So for example, if you want to break up Docker into multiple components, I can relate it with that. Yeah, more more or less, you know, and, and I guess probably, you know, the, the other thing I would mention is that, like, uh, how would I look at it? If you want to run containers, you probably want Docker or MCR. If you want to work on containers, if you want to work on the technologies, if you want to contribute, if you want to experiment, then you should be looking at Mobi as the uh, the code base that is built into those uh, those projects. Yeah, amazing. No shared about MCR. We'll talk more about that later. But uh, you know, a couple of years ago, Mirantis acquired uh, you know part of uh, Docker. So can you maybe share a little bit more about uh, the relationship between Mirantis and Docker? Right. So you know, to get, like to go into a little more depth there. So Mirantis Container Runtime, you know, is not just a replacement for Docker Engine Enterprise. 
it is the successor or it, or it is the same product. So, you know, my, my engineering team originally started out as the, uh, as the runtime engineering team um, at Docker Inc. And, you know, there's, there's uh, more than half the people I work with. In fact, I think, um, yeah, I think three out of four of our team uh, all started at Docker Inc. and have just continued to Marantis after the acquisition. Um, you know, our relationship with Docker Inc. is a, uh, is I guess I would call it like a very open collaboration. There's not really anything necessarily like secret behind the scenes. Um, it's it's more just that at this at this stage of the game, um, we both contribute to the same open source project, and so our relationship, you know, is primarily rooted in that Moby relationship, where it is a a community open source project. Um, you know, and we you know day to day, our our engineers are working hand in hand because we are ultimately you know both contributing to the same code base and making it better for both of us. Yeah, thanks and thanks a lot for sharing, John. And um, let's talk a little bit more about it uh, before we move forward. With uh, you know, we talk with obviously you know uh, here to educate folks on like some of the things that are changing and how they can best make you know use of the current scenario. Um, but before we give those suggestions, let's talk a little bit more about what's changing in the new version of Movie, which is twenty three point oh. And uh, you know, you as a community member, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, where the project is headed? And maybe like you know some of the new features and uh, some of the key things you know to keep in mind when you're upgrading to this new version. Yeah. So you know to 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 dig into like you know twenty three point zero. So this is the first major release since twenty point ten. Uh, almost. Uh, in fact, no. Actually, a little more than two years ago. Um, it is. It has very extensive release notes. You know, there's there's a lot of new features. There's a lot of things to go over. But at the same time. Um, you know, I think that for most people, it's a very uneventful upgrade. Um, so this is kind of first, you know, talking about what's new. I, I guess first off is the version number, um, you know, with 23.0, um, because Go modules is here, Go modules is supported, and, uh, you know, Moby is a Go project. We're moving to uh, Semver instead of Calver. So that's why it's 23.0 and not, for example, 23.2, because it came out in February. Um, so, you know, just, just bear that in mind. There is a slight change in the, in the naming scheme. But more importantly, like, you know, what, what are new features in the code? I, I think, you know, by far, the thing that has drawn the most attention, the most excitement, and is the most interesting is experimental support for a CSI or the container storage interface, uh, which is the plugin system that, you know, is most famously used by Kubernetes to, uh, to enable, you know, pluggable support for different backing uh, persistent volumes. Um, you know, so with, with CSI, you can have everything from uh, Hetzner, to uh, AWS, EBS, uh, to you know any sort of cloud provider, um, you know automatically plugging their their persistent storage into your cluster. Um, so CSI support is uh, in the scope of Swarm. So the, basically, the idea is that now Swarm volumes can be backed by CSI and not just Docker volume plugins. And this opens up a whole ecosystem of plugins to Swarm. Um, it's very interesting. It's also very very early days. You know, it's. Um, it's experimental in this release. So the intent is to keep on delivering improvements because it is an experimental feature. You know, we can even, we can change things very aggressively to get it into production ready shape um, as the as this branch matures, as this release matures, but it's not ready for production today. Um, you know, there are simply too many CSI plugins and too many configurations to truly, uh, you know, have a credible chance of uh, of fixing everything, uh, you know, before, before a widespread release. So the approach instead is, you know, the Mirantis is working with the community um, to try and expose the Swarm Kit CSI implementation to as many as many plugins as possible, find the deficiencies, find the bugs, and fix them. You know, my, my team is making it a, a priority to be very responsive there, since we originally led this effort, and we plan to uh, continue to uh, do so hand in hand with those who are interested in uh, in helping us test it. Uh, other features that are interesting, so you know, I'm not, I kind of some other maybe not quite as big, but still interesting features are uh, alternative OCI runtime shim support. And so, you know, what this means is before, if you had a drop in replacement for RunC, uh, so the most notable ones, uh, you know, RunC being the low level container runtime that's used by container D, Moby, et cetera, to run your containers. Um, you could drop in a, a drop in replacement for RunC that's compatible with RunC's API. So that would be like a C run or Yukai. Um, 
the fact that most people probably haven't heard of these projects, you know, illustrates that it's not necessarily the most useful thing in the world for a lot of people. So it's more interesting now as we have direct support in Mobi for full replacement implementations, including the shim layer. And what that means from a practical standpoint is now you can combine Mobi with GVisor and Kata containers, which are alternate sandboxing and execution models for containers, you know, based on um, a user space microkernel or virtual machines, respectively. So the idea is that you can mix and match the most appropriate isolation and containerization solution to your workflow with all the existing tools uh, that you know, you know, with, with, with Docker, essentially. Um, other interesting things, so we have BuildKit on by default. BuildKit is the next generation container building backend. Uh, you know, it brings massive improvements to performing, uh, performance of like multi-layer uh, builds as well as the caching and greater flexibility in the build stage. Uh, for example, you know, bind mounts in the build stage are possible with BuildKit. Um, it's BuildKit has been around for a long time. Uh, it's been uh, you know marked as the successor to the uh, the deprecated legacy builder in Mobi for years now. But this is the first release in which we're turning on by default and making it the uh, the default building experience for all users. The legacy builder is still there, still used on Windows. You can opt out of BuildKit, but it's turned on by default now because BuildKit is mature enough that it is you know a universal across the board improvement for all users of uh, well, the container builder. And finally, I think, you know, something that is like a notable improvement in 23 um, that, you know, has always been historically a bit of a headache is uh, health checks. Um, you know, there are some big improvements to health checks in 23, everything from, you know, properly resuming them when the daemon is restarted and kind of better better handling of health checks uh, and their life cycle, as well as, you know, the big one is that uh, for a long time, Moby has considered the execution time of the health check um, of the container runtime that runs the health check as part of the uh, the timeout, that is changed now. So that health checks, you know, don't count the overhead of the health check; they only count your code, and not any code that Moby is running on top of your code. And so that really uh, that really helps with health checks performing better uh, when a system is under heavy load. Um, you know, the so-called uh, thundering herd. Another big one that I want to highlight for people is that Windows Server 2019 is now the uh, the baseline version of Windows that is supported by Mobi and thus MCR, Docker CE. Um, you know, Windows Server 2016 is EOL and Windows Server 2019 contains a, uh, you know, a much more mature production ready uh, implementation of Windows containers. Microsoft has seriously put a lot of engineering effort into improving Windows containers from the first version in Windows Server 2016. And so, you know, with, with uh, Mobi 23.0, um, everything is fully moved to use that, uh, that new implementation of Windows containers um, and, you know, since Windows Server 2016 is EOL, this probably isn't a huge barrier, but certainly if you're looking to upgrade, you know, keep that in mind. And kind of finally, you know, what are, what, what, what are the gotchas when upgrading? Well, they're not notable. There's not anything huge, but again, there are some things that, you know, people will probably run into. So if you're having trouble after an upgrade, testing an upgrade, these are the places you should start looking. Um, the first one is that, there have been deprecated storage drivers for a long time in Mobi, and you know more or less all you've gotten is a warning when you run uh, when you run uh, Docker uh, Docker info or when your uh, daemon starts up. Um, those deprecations are progressing now. So if you have a deprecated storage driver in use, like let's say uh, Device Mapper was the default for a long time, especially on enterprise Linux, um, it's been deprecated for years now. Uh, Mobi will no longer automatically start up without intervention when you're using a deprecated storage driver. So, you know, if you have a deprecated driver, um, you need to explicitly set it in the config file to opt in to using the deprecated driver. You know, it's essentially a, I understand that this is probably going to be removed in the next version and I want to continue anyway. Uh, this is really just to try to raise more visibility, uh, you know, that the fact that this code is being removed, um, you know, and that it does require manual intervention. Um, there's also some breaking changes with new API versions. So I think the, you know, the most notable one in the new API version, which is 1.42, is that um, Docker volume prune uh, no longer considers named volumes by default. So only anonymous volumes are considered. Um, so you know, anonymous volume being one that wasn't given a name, a human readable name when it was created. This is a little bit of a breaking change, which is why it's gated by API version. But this is important because a lot of users name volumes because they value the data in them. They expect it to be persisted. And the fact that you know Docker Volume Prune could remove a named volume um, that had been specifically named by the user to be easy to access is surprising. So 
the old behavior is available behind a flag. And it's worth noting that you only see changes in Docker volume prune if your API client, so for example, the Docker command and your server, so that the daemon, Docker D, both support API version 1.42. And like I said, the old behavior continues to be supported. Uh, see the release notes for, uh, for some details on how to access it and will still be there when you use an older client. And then kind of, you know, finally here, uh, just, just like a general piece of advice when upgrading uh, Mobi is that the seccom filters almost always change in major releases. So if you do have mysterious compatibility problems, especially when you're running very old images, or if you have a slightly exotic workflow, uh, or workload rather, um, I would take a look at some of the seccom changes. You know, so there's some improvements for newer glibc versions, um, and, and, but more importantly, um, the, the big seccomp related change that some users might be bit by is that Mobi 23.0 blocks the uh, VSOC address family by default. Uh, VSOC is, uh, you know, what people also know as Hyper V sockets. It's a virtual networking technology for communicating between a VM and a hypervisor primarily. Um, you know, it's most notably used to implement uh, guest services on uh, Hyper V and Azure VMs. Um, that's actually how it works under the hood. It's not containerized by the Linux kernel, it's not namespaced. And so, you know, we block AFB sock by default now, which is a breaking change um, because it potentially represents a vector from which a container could unexpectedly talk to the hypervisor of a virtual machine. Um, you know, it is something that you can turn off by specifying a custom seccomp profile, but it is just worth noting, you know, it's probably the uh, the biggest breaking change when it kind of comes to the, uh, the platform and kernel uh, features that are provided to containers. It's interesting to note, yeah, thanks for sharing about uh, you know about all the changes. Uh, uh, just a quick follow-up question on uh, you mentioned about uh, the community support, right? And you mentioned when you're you know working towards uh, making it production ready. Um, so, have you seen any of like the community projects that are starting to take advantage uh, of these new features, like for example, the CSI support and uh, the rest of the things that you just mentioned? Yeah. So let let me share my screen here. Um, I think this this repository right here is uh, probably the most interesting place when we're talking about like that that community effort to uh, to get CSI, um, you know, into into a uh, production ready form. Um, you know, several members of the community have taken it upon themselves, uh, you know, work to uh, help identify issues with Swarm CSI support, deliver pull requests or quality bug reports, um, you know, for for missing features or broken functionality in Swarm CSI support, as well as to start advocating for uh, Swarm, you know, in the CSI ecosystem and start getting, you know, either deficiencies in CSI plugins fixed, or uh, you know, get official, in, uh, you know, an official packaging and sign off by uh, by CSI plugin vendors. Um, so you know, notably uh, here, Hetzner now actually supports Swarm. And that has been a completely community-driven effort that you know we have provided advice on and been responsive to, but ultimately you know has has been driven by uh, by interested people in the community. And so, if you're interested in CSI and Swarm, um, you know this uh, this repository here, which will uh, will have a, a link in uh, some sort of uh, description or uh, or uh, uh, resources at the end here, uh, is is probably the best place to go look as you know people are making an effort to make it a uh, a one-stop shop. Um, and I guess one other thing I'll mention too, Kanal, um, you know, for people who are interested in and in working on getting a CSI plugin up and running on Swarm, um, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that Swarm only supports the Container Storage Interface API and not any other Kubernetes APIs. And so what that means is, you know, for example, we we look at this list here, uh, you know, at the Longhorn um, CSI plugin, it's not compatible because it runs a Kubernetes controller and doesn't just use the CSI API. And so likewise, you know, if a plugin has a Kubernetes operator or any other Kubernetes component, it will not work on Swarm uh, because, you know, Swarm is not emulating those other, other Kubernetes interfaces. So, you know, just, just worth noting too, that if this is something you're interested in, just double check that the CSI plugin that you're trying to get supported on Swarm doesn't actually uh, directly couple uh, to Kubernetes, but instead is uh, portable and only uses the, uh, the, the uh, standard uh, APIs, the non-Kubernetes specific APIs. Thanks for sharing. And yeah, like Bjorn mentioned, all the links you can, I believe you can find it in, uh, I think, share, share blog data and uh, in the end slide on the resources as well. And one more thing to keep uh, in mind uh, while Bjorn was talking about storage drivers. So when you change a storage driver, you know, your the existing containers and stuff, it becomes inaccessible uh, because the layers cannot be used by the new driver. So make sure you keep that in mind. And uh, not just that, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about um, 
you know, some of the other things to keep in mind. So, you know, beyond as there are so many options, right? You know, folks might be in a dilemma to decide between, let's say, Docker CE or MCR and, uh, you know, like not CTL uh, with, uh, along with uh, container D, for example. So can you tell us a little bit more about, let's say, we, we, if, we, if we first speak about, um, let's first discuss about what are some of the things that are being deprecated. And uh, then we can talk a little bit about uh, whom, is, whom is it for, like the Docker CE, who's the ideal, who's the ideal uh, like what is the ideal use case in order to be going with that. And then we can talk about like maybe can compare with MCR and uh, you know, some of the things that are available or not available in container D. And another key thing in mind uh, for folks uh, you know, who want to upgrade is licensing and some of the support concerns, right? So like how do you transition from let's say the Microsoft one to Mirantis if you end up using that? Um, and uh, maybe some of the free alternatives. So overall, let's talk a little bit more about some of the you know options that folks have now that they are looking to upgrade. Yeah. So you know, I I think this is uh, this is something that there's a lot of um, maybe not like complexity from the technical side, um, but I, the Windows container landscape is confusing right now. So you know, hopefully we can we can help sort that out for people. Um, you know, especially with this May first date looming. You know, and so that's that's a little scary. You know, it's it, I think at a lot of places it looks like you know Microsoft to drop support in Windows Server for Docker on May first. What does that mean? And you know what? What do I do? Um, so I think I think let's start. You know what? What? What first? What are what are the options? How do people actually run containers on Windows? Um, the answer is mostly Moby. So for a very long time, um, you know, for five years, uh, Microsoft included a entitlement uh, licensing support to Docker Engine Enterprise with every copy of Windows Server. And so they had a component called the Docker Microsoft Provider through one Git where you could just install Docker. And the Docker you got was Docker Engine Enterprise. So you know, after, after the acquisition, after the transition of Docker Engine Enterprise to Mirantis, the rename to Mirantis Container Runtime, that became Mirantis Container Runtime. Uh, the reality is, you know, the numbers we see, the vast majority of people who are running uh, containers on Windows, and especially building them, are using the code that my team delivers as you know, Mirantis Container Runtime. Um, now that that is going away, and again, you know, we'll, we'll get into the implications of that here in, in a minute. Um, people now, you know, kind of are kind of taking a step back and trying to figure out, okay, what what in the year 2023, how do I run containers on Windows in different environments as well? Um, so to kind of break down, you know, for, first off, what what are the different options in the first place? Mirantis Container Runtime it continues to be available direct from Mirantis and is what most people have been using. It is, you know, Docker Engine Enterprise. It is packaged for and distributed for Windows. And, you know, it's it's a first class, very easy to get option, um, but it, it does require you to have a relationship with Mirantis. Um, Docker Desktop is another common one. So especially for developer workloads, Docker Desktop, I think most people know as a way to run, uh, you know, what, what we uh, who work on this tech a lot refer to as LCAL, but, you know, for mere mortals uh, who don't work on this stuff all day, that is Linux containers on Windows. However, Docker Desktop for Windows is not just a platform for running Linux containers. It can also run, you know, the, so the opposite, so-called WCAL, or Windows containers on Windows. There's a very nice, you know, you right-click Docker Desktop in your in your system tray, and you click Switch to Windows containers, and just like that, your Docker command is uh, working on a Windows uh, daemon instead of a Linux one. So Docker Desktop is still a good option, uh, you know, for for a lot of users, especially because it is free for small organizations. Now, Docker CE is probably an elephant in the room that you might be wondering about because Docker CE is, you know, I think a lot how a lot of people who don't need or you know don't want the richness of uh, Docker Desktop um, do run their containers on Linux, and Docker CE is available for Windows, but in a very bare bones state, and so it's it's somewhat challenging to use. There are some solutions to that. Um, they're maybe not for everyone, um, but there are, there are some excellent free options too that are you know totally unencumbered. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then finally, I think the other thing that is a, a, a little bit of the elephant in the room as well is Container D and NerdCuddle. And so, like you know, Kanal, at, at the start here, you mentioned that you know Microsoft is focusing their efforts less on Moby and more on Container D. And so, you know, that I think is you know the a, a source of a lot of confusion. Um, 
because where where Microsoft is headed and you know what what technologies they are focused on, you know maybe aren't aren't uh, aren't suitable or at least are confusing, um, you know for for a lot of people. So Container D, you know, let's just talk about that for a quick second. Um, you know, Container D is the code um, that used to be a part of Mobi that's responsible for essentially taking all the resources that you want to put into a container, you know, mounts, networking, et cetera, and mixing it together into the actual final container that is then run. Um, that is where Microsoft is putting most of their efforts. You know, Container D was born out of the need to separate reusable functionality from Mobi, which is focused on being a rich tool for developers and having a lot of batteries included into something more minimal for Kubernetes. And so, you know, as part of Microsoft's uh, investment in AKS and Kubernetes on Windows, you know, that is that is where their focus on Container D is coming from. Now, Container D by itself can't do much. Um, you know, it's it's actually kind of like Mobi in that, you know, Mobi can't do much standalone. You need the Docker CLI or another API client to actually, you know, get it to do useful things. There is a counterpart to the Docker CLI for Containerd called NerdCuddle, and NerdCuddle is a you know, more or less attempts to be a drop-in replacement for the Docker CLI that supports the same flags, that supports the same options. Um, I, I think the notable thing, though, is that you know NerdCuddle can be useful for very simple use of containers on Windows, and NerdCuddle and Containerd do work. But it's very early days. There's lots of things that are broken. There's lots of things that require a lot of troubleshooting. And I think more importantly for most people, um, you know, NerdCuddle does not support building containers on Windows. Mobi's legacy builder is still the only um, piece of software that can build a Windows container. And so for a lot of people, I think that's a showstopper. If you want to live on the bleeding edge and, you know, especially get close to the, the low level of uh, Windows containers and understand you know more of what's going on under the hood and what what is what the what the development landscape is like. Um, experimenting with NerdCuddle and Container D makes a lot of sense. If you are trying to run a container on you know manually on a Kubernetes node that already has Container D because it is the runtime that supports Windows, um, you know that that also could make sense. But for most people, I'm going to suggest you know sticking with the Mobi project because it is still the the first and most mature implementation of Windows containers. So, so then kind of moving on to let, let, let's like also convent, uh, confront the, uh, the scary thing, this whole Microsoft deprecation on May 1st. What, what actually is changing? What is going away? Okay, so it, it's, it's, it's three things, right? Um, so first, I mentioned the Docker Microsoft provider. This was a one Git provider that lets you install Docker EE, Marantis Container Runtime. You know, they're, they're the same thing under a slightly different name uh, in, you know, a couple PowerShell commands. Um, as it's maintained by Microsoft, and as Microsoft is no longer uh, maintaining that uh, that that entitlement, or what what some people call a bundling, I guess the other important thing to note is the the the, the bundling that occurred with uh, Docker EE and Windows was purely that of licensing and support, and not the code itself. So that's why the Docker Microsoft provider exists. It's there so that you can easily install the supported Docker Engine Enterprise. Uh, or Marantis Container Runtime onto your Windows Server machine. That is being deprecated. And then also, for convenience, Microsoft provided a selection of images on the Azure Marketplace um, that came truly bundled. Uh, Docker Engine Enterprise, Marantis Container Runtime, was pre-installed. Um, those are also going away and will no longer be available after May 1st. You know, And kind of the final thing is the ephemeral component. It's, it's not the code. It is the entitlement, the you know the the so-called bundling, is also going away, and so you know what that means is essentially to get support with Marantis Container Runtime in the future, uh, to get licensing for Marantis Container Runtime, you are no longer having a relationship with Microsoft, who then forwards things to Marantis. You're instead working directly with Marantis. Now, how do you actually get MCR, right? So, like, I what do I replace the Docker Microsoft provider with? What do I replace the Azure images with? Well, we first off, you know, for customers who are dependent on those Azure images or want to get started with MCR in a very easy way, we have replacement Azure Marketplace images available for different versions of Windows Server. So you can simply take that Azure Marketplace image and use it as a drop-in replacement in your Terraform uh, or, you know, uh, whatever other tool you're using. Or, you know, you're using Packer to build your images. You can use that as a replacement base image for your VMs. Um, that will enable you to seamlessly transition uh, from the images that Microsoft built um, to the ones that now Marantis is providing. 
if you're reliant on the Docker or Microsoft provider, so you know you have something more complex where you or you know you have a requirement to use a different base image and you can't use the uh, the Azure ones, or you want to have a direct relationship licensing relationship with Mirantis and you don't want to uh, you don't want to get your licensing through the Azure marketplace as an hourly cost, um, you can use our replacement PowerShell installer script. Um, so it's a little different in that it's not a one-get provider; it's a standalone script you run. Uh, but we do provide a uh, assigned uh, PowerShell installer that you know works in a very similar way, allows you to specify the exact version you need, and uh, you know installs MCR uh, quickly and easily. Um, the other elephant in the room here too is okay. So I was using Docker Engine Enterprise, Rance's Container Runtime, because it was easy because that Docker Microsoft provider existed and I was already licensed, so it didn't matter to me that you know I I had like this this support entitlement that I never used because I just wanted Docker. Okay, so that that's a little trickier. Um, you know, like I think I mentioned before that Docker Community Edition for Windows is still pretty bare bones. Um, you know, it, the Microsoft documentation um, it does mention a method to install um, Docker CE. In fact, let me share my screen here. So you know, Microsoft kind of has some guidance on how to get started with uh, Windows containers. I would strongly caution against using the uh, the script mentioned here because it is actually pulling uh, outdated nightly builds of the Mobi project. So not Docker CE. And what does that mean? Well, it mostly means that they're not code signed and they're not from a release version. They are unstable builds of, uh, you know, of, of raw Mobi. Um, I, would, I would caution against doing that. Um, instead, I would like to draw people's attention to a very useful project by a, by a community member called Stevador. And so this is a, uh, essentially a MSI installer that does a lot of what, uh, of what the old Docker Microsoft provider did or what the Miranda supported script does, but for Docker CE. So this specifically, you know, it bundles additional components that are quite useful, um, like Docker Compose. It also uh, sets up the firewall rules and the services that you need to get an actually uh, functional um, Docker install on your Windows machine. And it, uh, it uses the official binaries as provided by Docker Inc. So they're they're code signed and they are from a release version and, and not built uh, you know, from the bleeding edge. Um, so there will be a link to that as well at the end here. Um, yeah, it's uh I, I think it's you know it, it's it's not for everyone, especially if you need to have support or even if you know you need to have a security and you know uh, somebody that you can trust and hold accountable in your supply chain. Um, you know, transitioning to Mirantis container runtime, getting it directly from Mirantis probably makes more sense. Um, but, you know, especially for like a developer environment where say Docker desktop or Mirantis container runtime isn't suitable, or you simply don't need the, uh, the support and the, 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 the relationship there, um, you know, Docker CE with this project is, uh, is a lot more usable and can certainly be a, a drop in replacement for users who, uh, who have simple requirements, you know, who, who don't need, uh, to deal with more enterprise concerns. And, and then finally, you know, let's, let's talk about like the, uh, I think kind of, again, the, the scary things about this transition. So with the support handoff uh, and licensing handoff from Microsoft to Mirantis, there's probably some things that are top of mind, right? So do you have to upgrade? No, if you want to continue as is with an existing machine and just keep running that deployment, you can. You won't get security patches, bug fixes. You won't get uh, you know, the ability to, uh, to open a support ticket, but you will be able to keep running those workloads. Um, now, you know, if, if you are like deploying new workloads, that will be a problem. So, you know, if you're relying on the Docker Microsoft provider, if you're relying on the Azure images, yes, you will have to take action. Uh, you will have to transition to the Mirantis equivalents to continue deploying those because Microsoft is no longer making their, uh, their options available. But, you know, for existing workloads, there's no action needed, right? It's only, it's only for, for new deployments. Um, how do you actually transition? I mean, uh, hopefully... I've I've made that clear, you know, from a from a technical standpoint, it's going to be those Azure Marketplace images, or it's going to be the use of the new PowerShell script to replace the Docker Microsoft provider, and then you know from a practical standpoint too of like, okay, so I I need support. I've decided that Mirantis Container Runtime is right for me. What do I do next? You start using those Azure Marketplace images, which are drop-in simple to use and provide hourly licensing, or you go to our Mirantis Container Runtime landing page, um, which is also linked from the Microsoft documentation. We'll have a link here at the end for you. And you start that conversation with Mirantis Sales or go through our self-serve licensing options. And then, you know, finally, what about free alternatives? I don't, I don't need a support relationship. I don't need to spend money. I just need something that works. 
you know, that, that is really where I would either look at, you know, for your developer machines, um, you know, Docker desktop, especially if you don't need support, you're probably a small enough organization that the free options make sense or, you know, looking at the Stevedore project or, uh, you know, building, uh, you know, distributing your own uh, copy of Docker CE, um, you know, are, are all viable options, but of course, are a little, a little more manual, a little, a little more complex than just uh, relying on Mirantis to do it for you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for sharing I, I, about, uh, yeah, I mean, thanks for sharing, Bjorn, uh, about all the resources and uh, there was a lot to unpack. So that definitely will have all the resources for you all in the end. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to anytime, you know, ask in the chat. Uh, speaking of the you know licensing and support uh, you know uh, concerns uh, about the free trial for MCR, right? Is that limited in any way, or what are what are the sort sort of like uh, use cases that you would recommend that to? Um, so ideally, if like say for example, if I want to run a full like production deployment, can I do that with the with a free trial, or uh, are there the other alternatives that you would recommend for that? Yeah, so I, I you know good good. Uh... Good, good catch there. You know, uh, MCR does have a free trial, and it is unrestricted. It's the exact same version of the code that we ship to, you know, to uh, fully licensed paying customers. So if you are, uh, you know, if you are looking to, uh, you know, like yeah, like you said, if if you want to uh, model a production deployment, uh, you know, you can build out a cluster that is just as um, just as elaborate, you know, and uses every feature of MCR just like your production environment would, and you know, you can do that entirely with the free trial. Uh, you know, before you decide to move forward with uh, with licensing with Mirantis. Um, so it really is, uh, you know, quite quite flexible for anybody, you know. Now, now we are talking mostly about upgrading. And so in that case, you already know what, what Mirantis Container Runtime is like because you've been using it. You know, it's it, it came it came with Windows, or at least the license came with Windows. Um, but, you know, for, for people who might be looking at this from a perspective of, I need to, I need to build something new, um, and oh, oh, all this is happening, um, you know, keep in mind that you know just because it's no longer uh, it's no longer you know comes as an entitlement with Windows, it's no easier to get up and running with. You have access to a free free trial that is unrestricted. Um, you know that uh, that fills fills kind of that role of the uh, the uh, again I'm, I I struggle to use the word bundling because it really is overloaded. But you know that that fact that the entitlement came with Windows. I agree with that. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, sharing, Bjorn. And uh, you mentioned so many like alternatives, right? And we, we definitely test upon the, the some of the concerns. But if we talk about the options, we talk a little bit more about, let's say, how does one choose the approach that is right for them? If I take an example for, uh, you know, MCR, right? So there might be some some other situations where it makes more sense to use MCR, you know, particularly like, for example, when folks are using the Docker API with Kubernetes or you know, using Swarm, for example, or they're facing any like security requirements or whatever. Uh, but in other cases, it might make sense to you know go with like other alternatives. So, one of the key things, like from let's say your experience, apart from all the things that are in the books, if we talk about experience, then we're talking a little bit about raising questions around let's say engineering cost. We're talking about security. We're talking about complexity. So, in order for the users to be able to make this decision, can you tell us a little bit more about how to choose the approach that is you know, the right fit for you? So like for the Kubernetes cluster, the production cluster, or just developer machines? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, th I think exactly like right there, how we've you've inverted the, uh, you know, instead of instead of looking at the product first, looking at the use case, I think is the way I'd approach this. Um, you know, so, so kind of like walking through those. I mean, first you mentioned the, you know, the security and complexity concerns. So in a, in a production cluster where you're, where you're deploying Windows containers in production, but you're, you're not, let's say, you know, without Kubernetes. So it's either unorchestrated or with Swarm, most likely. Um, you know, I think Mirantis container runtime is the, is the best fit for most people. There is the drop-in replacement for uh, Docker EE and how it used to come, uh, you know, come with Windows. The license used to come with Windows. We have equivalents for everything that is being deprecated or being removed by Microsoft. And you know, more importantly, on kind of like the complexity and security side, you have those end-to-end -end solutions. You have a secure supply chain. You have a vendor to have a relationship for support to hold accountable. Um, that really deals with a lot of those operational complexities that might come from building something yourself. But you know, if if those concerns don't exist for you, you know, certainly, uh, you know, there's Docker CE is is available, um, is something that you could use in a production setting, but you are going to be giving up, you know, it's like the complexity of deploying it, um, as well as, uh, 
as the additional features and value add, like the testing and validation and the uh, the FIPS support, um, et, et cetera. For Kubernetes, you know, I, I don't think actually much changes. Uh, you know, Kubernetes is actually the thing that's the least impacted here because Mirantis Kubernetes engine continues to support uh, Windows, continues to come with an MCR license included. And, you know, in fact, the way that most people install MCR on Windows to support Kubernetes was already directly from Mirantis because, you know, like I said, the, they came with a uh, Mirantis license. Um, so there's actually not a lot that has changed. You know, and, and then likewise, you know, for like Azure Kubernetes service, nothing changes for you at all. That's that's the kind of the whole the whole um, the whole background here is that Microsoft is focusing on Container D, which they use in Azure Kubernetes service. You know, over um, over supporting uh, you know like smaller workloads, non Kubernetes workloads, where the torch is being passed to Mirantis to be the uh, the champion of that use case of Windows containers. And then you know, finally, developer machines, I think, is the trickiest one. And, you know, like I said, a lot of people have been using Mirantis Container Runtime, not because they needed the extra value it offers, but because it was easy, because Microsoft made it really easy to install. Um, and in that case, you know, I, I think my my answer for most people is use Docker Desktop. It really is a great piece of software. Um, it's not perfect, but you would be pretty amazed at how much complexity it manages to hide uh, to, you know, let you more or less just run containers. If that's not appropriate for you, um, you know, then I would encourage you to again look at look at options like Docker CE, and you know, realize just that you're trading uh, you're trading potentially uh, cost, and uh, you know, having some of that some of that um, additional things on top that you know, like may, maybe you don't value a GUI. Okay, well that's that is just extra component, extra complexity that maybe you don't need. But if you if you go to something that's not Docker Desktop, then you know just be aware that you are taking on the support uh, and deployment and security burden, uh, you know more or less upon yourself. Cool, cool. Thanks for sharing. And I know you iterated upon it earlier as well when we we're talking about uh, the Docker CE. Um, maybe you can share a little bit more about, let's say, if you talk about running Swarm, you know, on the Windows Server. So, what are some of the best options for people who want to do that? Yeah, um, you know, I think Swarm. You know, maybe maybe we we didn't highlight it or or talk about it more earlier, just because, in all honesty, not much has changed. Um, you know, Swarm continues to be supported, um, continues to work uh, for Windows workloads as well as mixed workloads of uh, Linux and Windows machines. Um, and you know, I, I I think fundamentally has not changed much. If we want to talk about like the easiest way to get up and running with a Swarm, I mean, I think by far historically that was the Microsoft provided uh, Windows Server with containers, uh, Azure Images, and the successor to those now, the Mirantis provided um, Mirantis Container Runtime and Windows Images. Uh, but all of you know, and any option here um, that is designed for production use, so that's you know mostly going to be you know without without like the GUI of Docker Desktop with Windows Server support. So that's going to be uh, uh, Mirantis Container Runtime, Docker CE um, is going to continue to support Swarm well. So it's really just a matter of you know if you're like if you're trying to deploy a production swarm quickly and at scale, um, I, there's a lot of value in leveraging you know the ways Mirantis has reduced the complexity of that for you you know with the uh, with the VM images with the licensing bundled in with the uh, with the PowerShell installer etc. Um, you know those were those were excellent options before this transition and Mirantis continues to provide alternatives after to uh, maintain the same ease. Um, so you know I, I think those are technically speaking swarm works as well as it always has everywhere uh, but you know from like a practical like okay you know now i need to now i need to actually make this happen standpoint um you know still the uh the additional automation and convenience uh from the uh docker engine enterprise branches container runtime uh solution uh you know it does really help with with some of that complexity in the real world and uh, there's a question here from uh, one of our uh, attendees uh which is uh, is microsoft planning on uh, developing their own container runtime for windows server a desktop and uh, the Azure VMs, and how do they deal with uh, the Windows licenses uh, for each container as opposed to VMs? Yeah, uh, good, uh, good question. So I, I think that, like I touched on that earlier, but you know, we we, we should dig in a little deeper because again, I, I think it, it, it is confusing. Um, so that is Container D. You know, when, when we talk about like, I guess you know, where is Microsoft focusing? They're focusing on Container D. And that container D is not new. It's not like it's not anything Microsoft specific. It's not anything super exotic. Um, you know, container D really is the guts of Moby, the low level part that made a container pulled into somewhere where it can be, you know, more useful to more people. So, you know, that that is container D was primarily made so that both 
um, Moby and Kubernetes could share a common code base without Kubernetes concerns leaking into Docker, into Moby, or without uh, Moby concerns, you know, affecting Kubernetes uh, to, you know, to make life simpler for everyone. Um, so, you know, when, when, when we talk about like the where, what, what is Microsoft doing with Windows containers? That's where their focus is, is, is on container D. And it really is, you know, parts of Moby, parts of Docker under another name. Um, as far as like the licensing goes, um, you know, now I, I can't speak for Microsoft, but I can, you know, I, I can speak as to just what the situation has always been on Windows, which is that you do not need another license for containers. Um, you know, a container, importantly, um, is, a, is not a VM. It's a very lightweight method of sharing multiplexing resources and giving the, the code that runs inside the container a view of the world like it was in a VM, like it was in its own machine, while sharing many of those resources. So when you run a container on Windows Server, by default, you're using process isolation. And so process isolation means that it's just like a Linux container. You know, it's, it's that every process is actually running on the same Windows Server kernel on the same machine, and it's just getting its own pool of process IDs, its own view of the network, its own, uh, you know, this, its own that, its own view of the disk, et cetera. Um, there's no licensing implications there. Now, this is, you know, I, I think where maybe some of this, some of this question might be coming from is there is a feature of Windows containers called Hyper-V isolation. And Hyper-V isolation gives each server its own really, really, really tiny minimal VM. And when I say, you know, minimal VM, I mean that there is a separate copy of the Windows kernel booted up just for that container, but huge swaths of it are not actually running and instead are delegating to the container host. So it's much lighter weight than even the most minimal VM that you could build uh, yourself uh, with traditional tools. Um, Hyper-V isolation is still considered, you know, even though technically virtualization is a component, it's still considered to be the same machine as far as Microsoft licensing goes. Um, so, you know, I, ho hopefully that helps. Uh, you know, containers are something that comes with your Windows Server's license, um, but there's there's not, you know, there's not really any impl impl implications as far as like running a container versus running the code directly on the host machine. Thank you, Shane. We wanna believe that answers the question. And uh, we're all almost closing in on our uh, webinar, like uh, in terms of the time we had. Um, so these are the resources that you can check out. And last question to you is, what are you really, really looking forward to if we talk about, let's say, a few years down the line, um, you know, any predictions you'd like to make or anything you'd like to share, um, some things you're excited about. And yeah, just like uh, be basically closing remarks and things to look forward to. Maybe any new yeah. announcements or something. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I'm how to, how would I put it? I'm not the right person to make you know like really really long range predictions, um, you know, or 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 I guess make promises about what's going to happen. I mean, I mean, the, you know, the thing to keep in mind with Moby is that it is a community driven project. So you know, I work on it full time on behalf of Mirantis, but we're not the only ones steering the ship. We're not the only ones who are participating. Um, you know, that being said, there definitely, you know, there definitely is a lot of interesting things we're working on. And so that's everything from, you know, we've talked about Swarm CSI. I think it is really interesting and important to keep Swarm uh, relevant and competitive. Um, you know, it's, uh, we, we've had Docker volume plugins for a long time, but CSI has become the industry standard. And so instead of having our own competing standard with Kubernetes, it makes a lot of sense to align so that we can, you know, reuse the same code. It's kind of like why the container D work started. Um, so getting that to a production ready state, I think is is really interesting, really competitive, uh, really compelling, um, and you know is is a major focus for us. Um, other things I think unfortunately are you know are more uh, like on the technical side, I think are more more maintenance and uh, and keeping things, you know, um, I, I guess like you know keeping keeping Moby going, keeping it uh, useful as uh, as technology evolves, as uh, containers gain new features, et cetera. Um, so it's maybe not as interesting to talk about, but I, I guess the other thing that like I personally, um, you know, would, would like to highlight, you know, where, where we and I am, you know, putting a big effort in is kind of on the continued health and independence of the Moby project and, you know, keeping it to be something that is not just Docker Inc. throwing code over the wall, Mirantis throwing code over the wall, but that, you know, is a true community governed project that meets the needs of everybody who works on it, whether they have a corporate affiliation or not, and, you know, where, where we're making sure to let the the, the code and the ideas, um, you know, speak for themselves, rather than you know any any particular uh, you know corporate uh, or you know or business interest. Um, so I, I think you know we're 
that that is hard in practice. Um, that that is really hard. I mean, I think you know if anybody has been involved in open source governance stuff is always difficult. Um, but it is something that we are you know trying to trying to take seriously and uh, to you know to make sure that we have a, a healthy open source project for for years to come, uh, where you know all all contributors are welcome. Um, and then you know kind of finally, um, there is a uh, there is a lot of just interesting things for uh for us to explore uh you know esmerantis dr rank and everybody's contributing to the moby project so you know i said there's a lot of uninteresting kind of refactoring and technical work happening right now but a lot of that is an eye looking forward to the future so you know this is very much not a roadmap there's no there's no promises but you know some of some of the things that we are investigating experimenting with that are interesting i mean is everything from cni container network interface plugin support is something that we're considering trying to see how feasible it is which would allow you know a lot of the same networking backends using kubernetes to be used with swarm to be used with standalone containers um, you know, it's things like uh, more features built on SwarmKit, evolving SwarmKit to have more of a full service mesh. It provides you know solutions like uh, application authentic authorization uh, and uh, and authentication um, that you know currently are not uh, not services that the Swarm provides that you have to build yourself. It, it, it's things like that. You know, I think we're um, we've got a lot on our plate, so it's hard to say you know for certain like what the next year brings. But we are you know. We are putting a lot of work into revitalizing the Moby project, and it's it's opening up a lot of possibilities for us to explore in the future. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing, Bjorn. And uh, for folks who want to get involved, you know, check it out. And uh, here are all the links. Um, it's really great talking to you, Bjorn. Uh, it's really a pleasure. And uh, uh, just as a closing remark, uh, I encourage folks to get involved in the community. And uh, uh, this webinar is being recorded, so if you want to watch it later, again, you can check it out. And uh, Really, you know, dive into the resources that we've shared here will definitely help you make the right decision. And uh, yeah, it was really fun. Thanks for joining here. And uh, thanks everyone else for joining as well from where you are from around the world. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And just the last bit I'd like to highlight is just up top in the resources area, that blog post I think is pretty useful. Just going a little more, a little more in depth, especially yeah. you now with, with text instead of video onto, uh, you know, some of the, I think some of the immediate concerns that people have, you know, of uh, practically speaking, again, you know, how how do I navigate this Windows container uh, situation? But, uh, yeah, thank you so much, yeah. for Kunal. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks everyone. And uh, yeah, ideally, you know, for people who want to get started, let's say for example, or folks who are already running Windows containers, we you know shared a lot of information around things to keep in mind, you know, when upgrading and all sorts of things. And if you're just getting started, then what 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 sort of options do you have? So yeah. You check it out and like Bjorn mentioned the blog as well you can find everything there and further questions you may have you can join the community and uh, join the open source community and you can contribute or ask your questions or even give feedback you know that's what open source is all about you know drive the initiative so yeah thanks a lot uh, everyone and we we'll see you in the next one have a great day